guys, today we are doing the field test for the Artist Loft watercolors that I picked up um, via Amazon, but they're typically sold on, um, sold through Michaels. I have here today a sketch of some cute succulents. I thought that would work well to demonstrate the strong points of these watercolors. I have a synthetic Laura, uh, Princeton Kalinsky Sable brush, so it is synthetic. And I've got my reference and a cup of clean water just off shot. And I apologize if I sound a little funky. I don't know what's going on with my voice this morning, but something's going on with my voice this morning. And now that you've seen the pans, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in so you guys can get a better look instead at the watercolors. And as we discussed earlier in the video, I'm going to try to keep my layer is fairly simple. Since these can get a little chalky, but they do have very brilliant colors. So they're not really suited so much for simple washes as they are for, you know, just get in there and paint almost like gouache. And I'm working fairly wet into wet. All right, so I'm gonna let that one dry and I'm gonna move on over into the greens. Well, that was the wrong end. And these all have like hot pink tips to the ends of each leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in wet into wet when possible. Some of these have dried already. And give those a chance to dry as well. And if you hear me yelp suddenly, it's because I have a cat on my lap who thinks his claws need to be in my leg. All right, so I'm gonna let those layers dry and I'll come back to it. Okay, so my paint has had a chance to dry and I have to admit, I'm pretty pleased that it did dry fairly vivid. That was a concern I had. And often when you're painting in watercolor and you're painting these bright jewel like colors, they tend to dry a little bit more muted than they went down. So that is always something a watercolor artist is considering and needs to take into account. So I'm pleased that these did dry a little more vivid And especially because these are not really the sort of watercolors that you're gonna be able to build up multiple layers with. So we really, like I said, need to treat these a bit like wash and just sort of have a light hand and try to minimize the layers. And I know those of you who have watched my painting videos before, you know, I have a problem with that. I do a lot of layers and sometimes it ends up kind of muddy. So I'm going to try. You'll also notice, I'll zoom way in for you guys, that if you apply it to a wet area, I'm sorry, a dry area, I misspoke, um, the surrounding area will absorb the paint you put down because these are, so, these are very chalky. And I also wouldn't expect to uh, get a lot of delicate blending effects with these again because they're so chalky maybe though if i was using a softer brush rather than a synthetic sable but i find that with these sort of chalkier 
lower grade paints. If you're working with a stiffer brush, it tends to help you pick up enough pigment to get sort of that washy effect. Although I will admit it's looking a little bit muddy down there. So I think less is probably definitely better. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll check in with you guys once again. Okay, so my watercolors had a chance to dry. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that it does dry chalky as mentioned in some areas, but for the most part, I'm pretty pleased with it. I am going to add just a few, or attempt to add just a few slightly darker details here and there. And that might not be effective. We'll find out though, right? I mean, when I say they might not be effective, with translucent watercolors, this would work just fine. But because we're working with um, chalkier watercolors, it might pose a bit of a problem. Yeah, it looks like as soon as they're drying, they're not really drawing any darker. And I don't really know how I could get them darker. Usually what you would do is you'd either mix darker colors or you would um, work with the paint more thickly, but I'm pretty much working as thick as this paint allows one to work. And of course, the surrounding areas also absorb some of the paint, which can make it harder to, to draw in details. So you really can't work fine with these. You gotta go big or go home. And your blending may end up looking very muddy, which is sort of the case here. So like we discussed, they are basically using um, some form of white filler. I usually just say it's it's chalk because, you know, I know there are artist grade chalks and it does seem very chalky. It could be talc, it could be gypsum, it could be all sorts of white artist quality fillers that instead of giving you color, just give you this sort of chalky look. But I can tell they're mixing those in with these watercolors to make the colors seem vibrant in the pan and more vibrant when you're putting them down. These are still better than that Dale or Rowney set I reviewed for you guys. Um, but it's still not what I would call, you know, artist quality. And I know there are a lot of artists here on YouTube who do manage to make these paints work. They don't seem to have some of the problems that I'm having. Um, maybe they got a better batch. Maybe they work in an area where the environment, like the outside environment might handle it a little better. I have found that working in um, humid environments tends to make even artist quality watercolors like Windsor and Newton behave poorly. And uh, I mean, it's a bright sunny day in Nashville today, so this sh it sh that shouldn't be the issue. But, you know. But the thing is, these are not marketed as opaque watercolors. These are just marketed as watercolors. Um, so they shouldn't even be opaque. The opacity is not a selling point with these. Um, like I said, I know a lot of you do use these and you do enjoy these. So I do think there is some value, some merit. And I'll probably keep my set around and continue to noodle with them and try to unlock the mysteries. But if you're looking for an affordable entry level watercolor set, I will recommend the Sakura Koi uh, little half pans. They're really more like cakes. Um, I will recommend their sets over this. They tend to behave more consistently. They can get chalky and muddy at times, but um, that isn't nearly, that's more of the exception. This seems to be the rule with the Artist Loft watercolors and with the Daler Rowney watercolors. Personally, I would recommend 
either watching for sales or saving up for a nicer artist quality set if you really would like to learn watercolor. I know a lot of my compatriots here on YouTube disagree with that. You know, the whole you don't have to have the nicest thing. And I'm not saying you have to have the nicest thing. You don't need the 120 set of watercolors to get started. But a a good quality 12 piece set is going to bring you a lot more satisfaction and it's going to be easier to learn how to paint with than um, a poor quality set or a, a set that has some interesting quirks that might be appealing to a more established watercolor artist but might prove difficult to someone just learning and it's really about being honest with yourself your skill level, your ability, your patience, how much you believe you can you can tame the beast and master the problems. And if you think the inability to do glazes or having your watercolors turn muddy on you while you're learning how to use them, which is not a common problem at this level of of detail. There's just not much detail here for this to have turned muddy. If you think those are things that you would find frustrating and discouraging, then you know you need to be honest with yourself and maybe hold off on a set like this, which seems to be popular among other artists, but presents some very unique challenges that they may not be disclosing. Uh, and just go save up your money and go for a better set. Now, this could be a great set if you are a hand letter and letterer, you work very, very simply. You are pretty much working just to record for Instagram or for YouTube. Oh, there goes the light. And it doesn't really matter if the end result is as vibrant as what showed up on camera. And I know that sounds mean. I'm not intending it to be mean. Um, I, I do know though that there are people who that's the reason why they're recording. And that's fine. That's Man, you gotta pay your bills, right? And this set would work well for that because initially this set seems very vibrant and then it dries kind of dull and muddy. Like look how vibrant this, I, I don't want to call it a yellow ochre because it's more like a buff than a yellow ochre, but you know, it's going down really nice, good color saturation. It's not going to dry this nice. I guess you guys know that now. And let's, let's even blend it out a little. Like it looks fine. Even as I'm working with it, I'm like, why was I complaining? But I promise you once it dries, it's not gonna look that nice. So if your intention is to do live demonstration, these are pretty good. I wouldn't even recommend these for kids or teens because you know, I think when you are buying art supplies for a young one who you love and not just as a stocking stuffer for some kids you don't know, I really think it's important to give them a good start, especially if you're serious about them, you know, learning how to draw, learning how to paint. Cheap art supplies has turned away many a kid from painting. And I know this firsthand, um, you know, struggling with cheap supplies was very frustrating for me when I was younger. And that's why I do the cheap art, or have done, and still sometimes do entries in the cheap art supply series because I do want to find affordable alternatives for people who might not be able to have better. But, you know, when you're working with cheap art supplies, it's really about you're working for the supplies. You are doing, you are finding ways to get the supplies to do what you need it to do. The other, it should be the reverse. You should be the master of your supplies and you should be familiar with them, but determining what they can do for you. With things like this, I'm working within their limitations. And there's a saying, it's a poor artist who blames their tools, but that's, that's assuming that we're all working with decent quality tools. It's a poor art supply manufacturer who intentionally makes poor supplies and then charges full price for them. But these are actually very inexpensive. So what are the good points on these watercolors? Okay, so they're inexpensive, very vibrant colors. If you work very light and very loose, if you like the vibrant, vivid colors, if you don't need to work tight, these can be great. 
They don't require a long activation time. You can pretty much just start swishing your brush on them and go. So if you are a travel watercolorist, if you like to watercolor on the go, these might be good for you because you can get brilliant colors very quickly. If you're working closely with a kid who is interested in these, these might not be the worst for them either because they're gonna have your guidance and your supervision. They're gonna have you telling them, hey, it's not you, it's the supplies. You're, you're, they're, you're going to be there to guide them on how to use these. But if you're the sort of parent who just buys stuff for the kids and then, you know, that's great, have fun, figure it out, good luck. These are not good watercolors for this. So I'm gonna let this dry. We'll check out how the end result looks and I will say my goodbyes. All right guys, so this is how the finished and dried piece turned out. It's really pretty cute. So I would say the Artist Loft watercolors are great if you're a hand letterer who's looking to do some colorful calligraphy perhaps. Also good if you have a sort of simple watercolor style, you don't need a lot of layers because it will turn muddy on you. But as long as you're working at a very concentrated level, it should be pretty good. Um, so it could be really good for um, very simple field sketching. There is a place in this kit to put a brush if you so desire. You could probably even put another one over there or you could possibly work with a water brush. But in my experience working with these sort of watercolors with a water brush, it tends to pick up every single subsequent layer because it puts down too much water. So these are the Artist Loft watercolors. This was my field test. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope it was useful. I hope it answered some questions and maybe it was even inspiring. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you leave a like and that will let other people know that this is a good resource. If you really, really like this video, please take a moment to share it with your friends, family, loved ones, anyone at all who you think might be interested in watercolor or might enjoy watercolor, watching someone paint a watercolor or maybe even someone who enjoys succulents. If you would share this video to your social networks, to Pinterest, to your Facebook, to your Twitter, to your Tumblr, or even to your Instagram, that would help me out a lot. I'm always trying to build my audience and your good word really means the world to me. If you have any questions, if you need, have any suggestions, if you would like to see me try something specific, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to you as soon as I possibly can. I do have a rather impressive backlog of videos that needs to need to be edited, so sometimes it will take me longer to get around to answering a question. It's not that I didn't record it, it's not that I didn't notice it. It said it takes forever for it to get edited and then added to the queue. But I do read your comments and I do thank you guys so much when you do comment and really that sort of community really means a lot to me. And I wanna facilitate an artist community, especially in the comic and illustrative arts where we can communicate with one another and I can address your questions. Um, art education is very important to me and making it accessible to others who might not be able to afford to attend um, a formal school for art. That's important as well. And even if you do go to a formal school for art, there are often holes in your education. I know there were holes in mine that I've had to fill. So um, I did that by looking up resources online. So I'm trying to contribute to that trend. If you like what I do, make sure you subscribe. I have loads more of these watercolor uh, little quick reviews coming up soon. They are part of my watercolor basic series. And if you think that sounds good, head on over to natosoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot blogspot dot com, my blog, and check out my watercolor basic series. There are loads of informative posts and tutorials there intended to help get you, yeah you, you the stamper, you the crafter, you the comic artist, you the illustrator, intended to get you painting. So please check that out. And if you wanna help support what I do, head on over to patreon.com slash netosoup for information on how to join my community of art nerds. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I see you again really soon and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye guys.